welcome to my channel. I am Risha Ferdinand, your boutique business strategist. And today, I am going to share with you the steps that you should take in order to start, build, and grow your boutique, whether it's an online boutique or a physical storefront. So get your notepad and your pen because it's going to be very intense. There may be a part two because I don't want this video to be very long and then get you overwhelmed. All right, so let's jump right in. Many times business owners tend to think that in order to get their booty going, they need to have all of their marketing in place, etc. Now, yes, we need marketing, but before we even get to that marketing phase, there are a couple of things that must be done. A number of booty owners approach me and they all have the same questions. You know, how do I start? There are some who have already started and got stuck. And when I investigate their business, I realize that they missed critical steps. I work with established boutiques, boutiques that have physical storefronts or online or even both. And they have been in the business for more than six, seven, ten years. So I have experience with established boutiques, growing them, maintaining these boutiques. I am here to share with you, you who are now starting or have already started, but you got stuck along the way to share with you exactly what you need to do in order to be a successful store owner. Now I talk about product based businesses, those who are selling a physical product like clothes, shoes, accessories here. Those are the type of businesses, right? Books, you name it, right? Once it's a physical product. So it's not limited to only clothing and those different things, but it's furniture as well as electronics. Once it's a physical product. Nevertheless, let's jump right in. The first thing you must do is conduct market research. That's right. Now, I'm not speaking about market research where you research your competitors only. No. There are two types of market research that you must conduct. The first one is research on your competitors, which is the most common one, but also research on the people that you intend to sell to or would like to sell to. So let's start with the easy one. Market research on the competitor. Now, I'm not talking about finding out how many followers they have and you know how long they have in been in business. I'm actually speaking about their problems. What are their reviews? What are the bad reviews that they have been getting on social media, on word of mouth? What are the bad things people are saying about your competitors? The people who are actually dominating in the industry that you want to get into. Also, why would people want to buy from them? What is it that they have that you can actually compete against? What would it take from you to actually steal their customers and make their customers your loyal customers? That's the kind of market research I'm speaking about. Find information about them. You know, what is their strategy, their marketing strategy? How have they performed in prior years? You know, what has been their business growth each year? What it looks like? Those are the things that you want to pay attention to. When you now get to the phase of doing market research on your customer base or the intended customers, the people you would like to sell to, you want to ask them, why are you shopping at XYZ company? How often do you shop at XYZ company? How much money do you spend there? What do you feel about this particular product? What, have you gotten options regarding this product? Who else do you shop from? Why don't you shop from ABC company? What are your issues in the market surrounding this product? So you see the type of questions I'm speaking about here. I'm not too concerned about age, income bracket, ethnicity. Yes, you should get that data. I'm not saying don't. But primarily, you want to understand who your competitors are and why are people buying from them. Because if they are missing a particular ingredient, 
if you can actually supply that ingredient, you can actually dominate. People will now flock to your store. So you want to find a market that has a need and then provide a product to meet that need. When you do that, you are creating automatic demand for your business, automatic demand for what you are selling. I have heard many times business owners say, um, the competition is real. It is saturated the market. So many people are selling the same thing. Yes, they are. And that's because they haven't done any research to know what can position them to do differently. Now, here is this. Once you're aware of what people are willing to spend for the product that you want to sell, that will help you determine your niche market as well. So now we could jump right into step two, finding your niche market. Now, what is a niche market? Firstly, let's talk about the pronunciation. Some persons may say niche, whilst others may say niche. Either way, it's the same thing. Tomato, tomato, we all know what it means. So your niche market is a subset of your target market. Here is an example. Your target market can be single mothers with an annual income of $40,000. That's your target market. But your niche market goes a step further. It's single mothers who have an, an annual income of $40,000 who has children that are over the ages of 14. Or here's another niche market single mothers with more than three children i am getting more detailed that's my niche market right your niche comes out of your target market i want you now to understand who exactly you want to sell to so by you now identifying you know your needs the market needs and demands you can now derive at the niche market when you come up with a niche market and have a product that they want, they will automatically flock to your store because your product will create its own demand. Let's look at this for example. Let's say uh, persons within the Muslim community, boys, who would wear that turban on their head. Young kids want to ride their bikes, but because of the helmets, the existing standard helmets, how it's made, it cannot fit their turbans on their head. So what about designing helmets that could actually shape, fit the shape of a turban? So that way, persons in the Muslim community do not feel excluded. They can still ride their bikes and still represent their religious beliefs. You get what I'm saying, right? So that by creating a product for them, it creates a demand because now someone actually found a solution for their need. They had a problem, no one was solving it. But if you now come up with a problem that is a solution to that problem, you now have a market that is in demand for what you're selling. So I want you to think about that. Who is the niche market? Who would you like to sell to? What are they willing to pay for what you're selling? How often would they buy it? Is there an existing market that is in high demand for the product? What are they doing right now in the absence of your product? What are they wearing? What are they drinking? You know, all of these different things. What are they doing? What does their life look like in the absence of your product? What does it substitute? that they have. Think about that. And that will help you to further come up with your niche market and the product that they want and they need in their lives and they are willing to spend the money to acquire it. Now you can sell a product that is in high demand. So that's your second step. Your third step now, after you've identified the market's needs, understand who is the um, competitors, how, many, how much money people are willing to spend for your product. The third thing now you want to do is understand your business structure. So you've tested, you've figured out, okay, this is your product. You now want to go ahead with your business structure, legalizing your business. 
I tell everyone, do not register your business until you know for a fact that you have a product and a niche market that wants it. You know for a fact that they are willing to spend money for it and how often they are willing to buy it. Get that solidified first before you register your business. Now, when it comes to registering your business, there are various types of businesses. You have sole proprietorship, you have LLC, you have partnerships. You want to find the one that is best for you. I highly recommend that you get on your um, revenue website, your inland revenue reps website, um, based upon whatever country you are in. If it's the IRS or the CRA or BIR, whichever country, find that website, get details about the different types of business structures in your country and find the one that is best suitable for you. You want to register your business, get your business registration number, might be your EIN number. In some in Canada, it's a BN. Um, in the Caribbean, it's a Board of Inland Revenue number. Fine, get that number. Make sure your business is registered. Now, let's take a step back a bit. Come on up with your business name. You do not want to register your business with a particular name when that name is already owned, trademarked by another entity. So you want to do research on your trademarks website, your, com your country's trademark website, and to search the name that you would like to name your business and to see if that name is already taken. Because here's what will happen. If you don't do that and you register your business, let's call your business Risha Ferdinand Limited. And you continue doing business with, in the name of Risha Ferdinand Limited. Two or three years pass, business is doing extremely well. But then you get to realize someone trademarked it prior to you registering it. You were unaware of it and they have found out. They can take legal action against you. They can issue a cease and desist letter. Right, and you could end up in court and having to pay a hefty fine. So to avoid all of that, do research on your business name to ensure that it's available. Search the name also on social media, across Google, to see if anyone else is using that business name. If they are not using the business name and it is available, then you register the business, okay? That is something that you make sure that you have to do when you're registering your business. After you have registered your business with your local authority, you will want to also register it and at the federal level as well, because if you register it only in your state level, that's all you have. That means someone else in another state can actually use the same business name that you registered it with. After you've registered your business, the next step is to understand your positioning, your unique selling proposition. What would make your business different? Now, many times when I ask business owners that they, the number one response is my customer service. Now, the truth is, the only way someone will know your customer service or customer experience is unique is they have to buy from you first. So if they don't buy from you, they will never experience your amazing customer experience. So therefore, you need to understand that your unique selling proposition cannot be that. Your USP should attract people, your unique audience, your niche market to what it is that you are selling. Okay? So I want you to understand your positioning um, and make sure whatever positioning you have, you are actually attracting the right people. If right now that you are in business and you are attracting the wrong people, then clearly your positioning is off. You need to revisit your market research, go all the way back to the top and then come back down because you would have missed key elements in it. Let's if you think of um, these brands such as Mercedes Benz and Tesla, their positioning is clear, it's unique. They're telling you who is their market, who they want to buy from them. So likewise, Toyota. Toyota is telling you who they want to buy from them. If we compare Nike, right, with Adidas, they clearly tell you who's their audience. So it's likewise with your brand. 
You want to ensure that you position your brand to be seen by your ideal customers. So think that through. What is your positioning? After you have covered your positioning, your fifth step is now into sourcing, product sourcing. You want to go and find the vendors to supply good quality products so that way you can attract the audience that you want. If you have poor quality products, listen to me, you are going to attract people who love poor quality products, which sells at very cheap prices. Okay. Once you understand who you're selling to, you will know the type of products you need to get and the quality. So you have to pay very much close attention to it. Test your products accordingly from the different vendors. Test their shipping period. Ensure that you have a point person that you can speak with should anything go wrong with your order. All of this is critical when you are seeking out vendors. Also, understand what is your volume in terms of discounts you will get. How long will it take for you to grow into a higher discount rate from that vendor? Once you establish all of that, you can now project and say, okay, I need to have 1,000 items in my order in order to get 50% discount from the vendor. So what must you do? Research, research, research. Be aware of your logistics. And now I'm going to move on to step six. Not just logistics in terms of your shipping from your vendor, but you also want to look at your logistics in terms of shipping to your customer. Who is your shipping carrier that you're going to use? Which one has better options? What about overnight delivery, right? What about packages that have been lost? Do you need insurance? All of these different types of delivery methods so that your customer can get a great experience with your brand. I understand that shipping is out of your hands once it goes into the hands of the, co of the courier, but still make sure it is complete. Get a good company that has efficiency and they take care of your products as well as deliver your products promptly to the customer, right? They don't destroy your, their, their packages. They don't steal packages. All of these things do research so that way you can understand the logistics and how long it takes to get to your customer as well. So you can give your customer correct timelines as to, um, when they can expect their order from you. Now, this is a pretty long um, presentation. I want to pause here. We have stopped at six steps so far, and we have a couple more to go again in terms of uh, getting your business started or going. The next um, video, I'm going to talk about pricing, cash flow management, money management, reporting, right? Understanding the health of your business and if your business can continue in the foreseeable future. Right, so share this video with people that you know who are interested in um, starting their own business as well as those who are already in business and you think that they are stuck. Share it with them, sharing is caring, okay? We want to get the word out there um, to help people get their business going the right way. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm not sure when you're watching it or where you're from, but I want to invite you to my five-day challenge. Yes, I have a challenge that is coming up in the month of November 2023. And that challenge is about increasing your cash flow. So it's a five day challenge called Increase Your Cash Flow. And you are going to go hard on that challenge. I will share the link in the um, description below so you can get more details about that upcoming challenge. But until then, I want you to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it with someone that you believe will benefit from what it is I shared today. And stay tuned for part two of this video series, okay? So, thank you for tuning in. Bye for now.